Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Crown Academy of English. Today we are doing a lesson about the words and phrases finally, at last, lastly and in the end. So finally, at last, lastly and in the end. These words and phrases are similar, they're very similar. But the meaning is in fact slightly different. So let's look at each one in more detail. So finally has two uses. Use number one, finally presents the last element of a series or list. Example, Mark asks, what do we need from the supermarket? And Jane answers, we need eggs, milk, sugar, and finally, a frying pan. So you can see, finally um, presents the last element of a list. And the last element is frying pan. So this is the list, eggs, milk, sugar. And we add the word finally just before the last element, the frying pan. Another example. First we need to rent an office. Then we need to buy some desks. Finally, we need to recruit a secretary. Finally, we need to recruit a secretary. So here we have several actions um, which are in order of time. So the first one, then this one, then finally the last action. Okay, so here we have a series of actions in order and we put the word finally before the last one. Okay, the last element. Finally we need to recruit a secretary. Finally, use two. We use finally to express that one has been waiting a long time for something. So we've been waiting a long time for something and we're perhaps getting a little bit impatient. Example, the bus finally arrived at midnight. So the, fa the fact that we say finally, it shows that um, we waited a long time for the bus okay the bus was perhaps late the bus finally arrived at midnight andrew has finally bought a new car has finally bought a new car so this suggests that andrew has waited a long time before buying a new car perhaps he has been saving up a long time, saving money. And finally, he has bought it. And unfortunately, that is not really my car. <laughs> I wish it was. Another example, the baby is finally asleep. The baby is finally asleep. So since we are saying finally, this suggests that um, perhaps we had to wait a long time before the baby fell asleep. Perhaps the baby was crying for three hours, but now the baby is finally asleep. Let's look at the word order. Finally goes in the middle position of a sentence. So what do I mean by this? What do I mean by the middle position? Well, it depends. It depends. If the sentence has a main verb, then we put finally before the main verb. And this is an example here, the first example. This sentence has a main verb, arrived. It's the past simple, it's just one main verb. So we put finally before it, okay? But 
If the sentence has an auxiliary verb or a modal verb, then we put finally after the auxiliary or modal verb and before the main verb. And this is an example of that. Okay, so this sentence is in the present perfect. And the present perfect has an auxiliary verb. Andrew has is the auxiliary, has is the auxiliary verb. And bought is the main verb. So finally goes after the auxiliary verb, after has, but before the main verb bought. Has finally bought. Okay. And finally, if the sentence has the verb be as a main verb or a linking verb, then we put finally after the verb be. Okay. And this is an example of that. The baby is. Is here is <laughs> an example of the verb be as a main verb. Okay, it is not an auxiliary verb here. This is not an auxiliary verb. It is a main verb, a linking verb. So we put finally after the verb be. The baby is finally asleep. Okay. At last. At last also expresses that one has been waiting a long time for something. So it is practically the same as the second use of finally. Okay, remember. But at last it's slightly stronger. Okay, it's slightly stronger. It expresses um, impatience or inconvenience at the long wait. And we have three choices for the position in a sentence. It can go at the beginning. At last, Mark has passed his degree. At last, Mark has passed his degree. So here's Mark. He's very happy. He has passed his degree. He has graduated. So the fact that we say at last here, it suggests that um, Perhaps Mark had a few difficulties and perhaps his degree was very long. Perhaps he studied medicine and it was perhaps seven or eight years. So at last, he's waited a long time. Or it can go in the middle. Mark has at, Mark has at last passed his degree. And so this is the auxiliary verb and this is the main verb past so at last goes in the middle or it can go at the end mark has passed his degree at last okay so here we have put at last at the end of the sentence and here is another example we have at last sold our house we have at last sold our house and we have chosen, we have decided to put um, at last in the middle position for this example. Okay, that was just our choice. So this sentence, it suggests that perhaps we had been trying to sell the house for several years or for a long time and we were getting impatient. So now we have at last sold our house and we're very pleased. Lastly, now this is slightly different. Lastly describes something that comes at the end of a series or list. So if you remember, this is actually the same as use one of finally. Remember, we, um, the use one of finally was also something that comes at the end of a list. 
This is slightly more common. This is probably the best word to, cho to choose um, for this use. Example. Firstly, the house is too expensive. Secondly, it's in bad condition. Thirdly, the location is awful. And lastly, we don't need a new house. Okay, so here we have, um, we are expressing several opinions about the house. Each one is separated by a semicolon. Semicolon. And for the last opinion, we start it, we begin it with the word lastly. Okay, lastly, we don't need a new house. And it always goes um, before um, before the phrase, before the clause. To start with, I drank a cup of coffee. Then I sat down. And lastly, I read the newspaper. This is the past tense, the past simple. Lastly, I read the newspaper. Okay, so again, we have a series of actions in the order of time. And the last one, we start it with the word lastly to show that that is the end of the action. It is the last action in the list. In the end. This is, this is slightly different. This often causes confusion for students. So, in the end, it, des it describes a conclusion. This is the important part. It describes a conclusion after perhaps a long process or several problems or after a lot of discussion and analysis. Okay, so perhaps for a long time the situation isn't clear about something and there's lots of thinking and deciding and, um, yes, reflecting about it and analysis. And when we arrive at the conclusion, we say, in the end. Let me give you some examples. He isn't a good driver but he passed his driving test in the end. So he isn't a good driver. So this suggests that learning to drive was a long process. There were lots of problems, um, but the conclusion was that he passed. So he passed his driving test in the end. So it means the conclusion of all this at after all this, he did actually pass the driving test. Example two, we couldn't decide between Paris, Rome or Madrid for our holidays. In the end, we chose Paris. So here we are saying that we had a difficult decision. We didn't, uh, we had a process, a long process of deciding between the three cities. Uh, there was lots of discussion and the conclusion at the end of that big discussion was that we chose Paris. Okay, so after all this analysis, we chose Paris. In the end, we chose Paris. The last example. The manager interviewed her three times and in the end he offered her the job. So there was a long process during the interview process, during the recruitment process, and the manager interviewed her on three separate occasions, three times. And the conclusion of all of this, the conclusion was he offered her the job. So instead of saying the conclusion, we say, and in the end, he offered her the job. And you can see the position of 
in the end? We have two choices. It is either at the end of the clause, like here, or the beginning of the clause, like here and here. Because here the clause is, he offered her the job. So we put, in the end, he offered her the job. So here it is at the beginning of the clause. Okay, so in the end, be careful, we use this to, um, to describe a conclusion. Okay, so there we are, that's the end. I hope you've enjoyed it. And here are some other videos which I think you might be interested in.